Lights out, chapter 59, part 4. I'll just rest them for a second, he thought. When he opened his eyes, sunlight was filtering in through the curtains. He looked at his watch, which read 6.30. Jess was snuggled up next to him. He got up as quietly as he could and dressed. He didn't feel like he'd gotten any sleep at all. In fact, he felt more tired now than he had last night. He leaned out, placed a hand on the wall, and tried to collect his strength. The stress must be taken more out of me than I realized, he thought. He looked up at the calendar. He had placed it on the wall over his dresser a few weeks ago and had started marking off the days. He found it difficult to remember what day it was since he wasn't on any kind of normal schedule anymore. In some ways it was liberating, but at times it was frustrating not knowing what day it was. So he started using the calendar. He picked up a pen and marked the day, Tuesday, October 28th. He counted back. It had been ten weeks since the burst. It seemed like a lifetime. He wished the lights would come back on and everything would go back to the way it was. He started to the kitchen, and when he got to the bedroom door, he stopped and flipped the light switch, wishing. He heard a giggle behind him. What did you do that for, Jess asked. Just hoping maybe they'd come on, he answered a little embarrassed that he'd gotten caught. Yeah, I was hoping to talk to my man last night too, but trying to wake you up did about as much good as flipping that switch on. Sorry. That's okay. I know you were tired. You want some breakfast? That would be great, he said. Come help me. He nodded his head, and they went into the kitchen and started the wordless ballet of preparing breakfast that had been perfected over many years. He finally broke the silence. What did you want to talk to me about? It's not that important. You've got to go pretty soon. It can wait until we have more time to talk about it. It seemed like it was pretty important last night. I don't have to leave for an hour. What is it? I was thinking that we need a couple more bedrooms. The boys really need something better than the dining room the way it is anyway. It's just too open, and they don't have any privacy. I was thinking that we could convert your study into one room and close the opening between the entryway and the dining room off to give whoever is in there some privacy. I see what you mean about the dining room, but the boys don't need separate rooms. Mike and I shared a room until he left for college. I know that. She paused like she was fishing for the right words. It's just that we need... The back door burst open, and George appeared suddenly and out of breath. Mark, he explained, trying to catch his breath. Mark, something knocked down the corner across the road. Come, quick. Be right back, Mark called over his shoulder as he followed the flustered George out of the door, across the road, and through the field. Mark could normally run circles around the old farmer, but in his excited state, George was setting quite a pace. Mark also noticed his left hamstring was a little stiff, and that was slowing him down a smidgen. That gunshot hasn't bothered me for a couple weeks, he thought. Must be the weather changing. When they'd gone not quite halfway across the five-acre field, George stopped suddenly. Look, he said as he pointed. The large area of corn had been flattened, and some of the small, young, tender ears had been eaten. Mark knew immediately what had done it. 